When I say Pete copped it, I wasn't taking it lightly. You know, he took huge amounts of criticism for his decision to return play during COVID. Here are just some of the quotes. One critic said, your behavior reminded me of those selfish panic merchants who have stripped supermarket shelves and have highlighted the worst of Australia's response to this terrifying plague. Another critic, the AFL want to show social leadership. They don't want to be like the NRL, just spruiking different ideas. We're going to be model citizens. And finally, this one from the former Premier of Victoria, Jeff Kennett. Down here, he's irrelevant. We don't even know who he is. There's a few in the sporting game that know his name, through football or racing. But he could walk down the street here in Melbourne and no one would recognise him. Peter is an absolute irrelevance. I bet you gave enormous satisfaction the fact that it started on that date, but also the blokes who were laughing and mocking you mimicked what you did, just basically followed that path. Look, in an unusual way, we saved a lot of sports because a lot of sports were looking at much later dates. They were looking at August, September. Um, and the financial losses they would have incurred would have been significant. I think the AFL were looking at a billion dollar loss is what they announced. You know, they made a $24 million loss because they started earlier. And, you know, with all the criticism and all, all the name calling, they started two weeks after us. So we proved, you know, we could be leaders and we led and everyone else followed. Sporting administrators down in, in Melbourne, um, racing in the AFL, do you think they're scared of you? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I love competition uh, and I think competition is a great thing. So it improves your performance, it improves what you do, but they don't see it that way. They see it as, as a threat. They see it, you know, as, and it's just simply competition, compete. They've never had competition. And so to them, it's foreign. It, it, so they, they don't know how to handle it. And all we're doing in both racing and rugby league, in my view, we're giving them competition. We're going to get better. We're going to get stronger. And we're going to take some of their fans. Let's talk about the racing. The Melbourne Spring Carnival was what, once absolutely untouchable. A few years ago, you had to plan to take it on. And again, they laughed at you and mocked you. Uh, they're not laughing now. I mean, the Everest and the Golden Eagle and races during that spring carnival. Mate, it has severely damaged their spring carnival, particularly days like Caulfield Cup and, and Cox Plate Day. Look, well, their government's come out and basically said that New South Wales is now providing competition. And they're the words I wanted to hear. We're providing competition. But the beauty about the Everest, is, which is lost on everybody, is it's for under 30-year-olds. Kids don't want to do what their parents do. So the Melbourne Cup is a traditional race, your parents bet on it, etc. The kids aren't engaged. So we wanted to find a race that it's their generational race, it's their race, and that's what the Everest was. So in a very short period of time, it's really worked. And, and it shows you if you have the right product and the right marketing and the right branding, you can do anything. And, and I want to bring that to rugby league as well. We want to get to that younger audience and that's why participation is so important. We've discovered that if you play the game, even if it's just tip or tag, and you play it for three years, you become a fan for life. And they're your customers, they're your future customers. And the thing I think all sports do wrong, and, this, and I think rugby league in particular, it never looks after its customer. It never looked after its fan. It looks after its players greatly, it looks after the coach, it looks after everyone, all the people that participate, but the person that pays the revenue was not, not, not considered. It's been a long while, I think, in rugby league since we've had an administrator who's willing to have big ideas. One of the things I, I've heard you talk about as far as racing is concerned, taking it to the next level, you know, that one day, to have the Everest, or a race of its kind, across the Harbour Bridge on a synthetic base. D is that a still still an ambition for you? Well, we're, I'll tell you a funny story about that one because um, I had an approach for, to run a race through Oxford Street and I thought this guy was mad. How could you have a race through a main street? But he came in and he said, um, look, I've got approval in England to run it through Oxford Street. Mm. And um, I said, no, oh, geez, well, if you've got, that's pretty decent, you know, because you've got to go through the British government, the London Council, you know, and, that's, and Oxford Street in London is the main thoroughfare. But I said, um, look, uh, Ascot really survives in England because of the Queen. I th you know, I think you should try to get the Queen involved. And, you know, and big noting myself, you know, because I knew someone that could get a meeting with the Queen. I said, I'll get you a meeting with the Queen. And the guy that's with him says, um, I don't think that's necessary. I said, why? Ascot's shit without the Queen. I said, you need the Queen, you need, you need her imprimatur. And he goes, I really don't think you should go there. And I'm looking at him strangely. He said, the guy's Peter Phillips, he's the Queen's grandson that was, <laughs> that was sitting there putting the proposal to me. Yeah, wow. So, uh, yeah. 
So, you know, so it was his idea, basically. So it is an ambition? You can see it one day happening? I think you've got to look outside the square. I think yeah. you've got to look how you can market your product and if it works. Yeah. But we'd certainly go north because we don't want to pay the toll. So you don't want to... Uh, <laughs> um, so. Well, given what it'd do for tourism in Australia, maybe the government will kick in and just pay for it.